The Philadelphia 76ers are one of the most polarizing and interesting franchises in the NBA. The last decade has been crazy to say the least, and that continues to this very day. The James Harden saga is yet to find a conclusion, and the Sixers roster following the recent signing of Kelly Oubre is interesting to say the least. Today I will be examining what is unfortunately my team and what exactly they might be thinking. Starting with the obvious cloud hanging over the Sixers at the moment, the James Harden saga, the Clippers are not willing to pay up to Maury's asking price and for good reason. It is because of this that I honestly think as of September 19th, 2023, that James Harden will be in a 76ers uniform on opening night. Part of me believes he will mail it in and a midseason trade will occur, but another part of me thinks that because of his continued relationship with his Sixers teammates and the removal of Doc Rivers, that James could come out looking rejuvenated, whether that is to help facilitate a trade or to finish what he started with the Sixers. Personally, I think we would be better off with a motivated Harden than Norman Powell and some other pieces, but if he's going to do everything in his power to get out, I'd rather it just be done now. While I think we'd be better off with Harden playing to his full abilities, I am still nowhere near confident in this team as a legit contender. Another year of age for not only Harden, but PJ Tucker as well, combined with the lingering issues, makes me think that this team is destined for disappointment regardless. If Daryl Morey had a quarter of a brain and fired Doc Rivers before last season, I think we'd be in a completely different place right now. I think Nick Nurse will be a huge positive for this team and make the Sixers likely exceed expectations within the fan base at the moment, but I'm honestly waiting for next offseason for any hope, and that is a terrible place to be with an MVP in his prime. But enough about Harden, let's get into the offseason additions that will definitely be playing for the Sixers this year, starting with the newest Sixer, Kelly Oubre Jr. While there's obviously a reason that Oubre was still a free agent in mid-September, I actually like this move. Kelly was a bit of an inefficient shot trucker last year in Charlotte, but I think he could be a good piece for this roster. Wing depth has long been an issue for us, and it was looking like it would be one yet again before this signing. Although Nurse hopefully doesn't have an obsession with all bench lineups like Doc Rivers, having another guy who can go get you a bucket will be key for this team. While he is not known as a defender, Nick Nurse could also possibly rejuvenate Oubre's defensive motor, which we saw a lot of in Phoenix. Oubre has his flaws, but I really like the pickup as the alternative was ancient PJ Tucker and Danny Green, or Furkan Korkmaz and Daniel House. Speaking of ancient Danny Green, let's discuss that signing. I actually wasn't as opposed to this signing as many, but it obviously has its drawbacks. I don't know how much a 36-year-old Danny Green coming off an ACL tear can offer, but I love love this guy and he has great chemistry with many Sixers as well as new coach Nick Nurse. Despite his age, Danny is the exact archetype of player that I have been begging the Sixers to add more of since the dawn of time. In however many minutes Danny plays, he should be able to offer floor spacing at the very least and maybe some defense if he's still up to it. Next up, we have Mo Bamba. I was in disarray when we signed him and re-signed Montrezl Harrell, leaving us with five of our 15 roster spots being consumed by centers when our star is a center and can't effectively play alongside any of them. But since Trez's unfortunate injury, I actually don't hate this move. With Nick Nurse's apparent plans to play Paul Reed alongside Joel Embiid, Bamba may see some level of playing time. Mo is a stretch big, which is a nice element to have on a roster. And like with Kelly Oubre, hopefully Nick Nurse can help out with his defense. Next up is someone Nick Nurse will not need to help on defense, none other than Pat Bev. While I would have absolutely loved this pickup a few years back, I'm still fine with the signing. While the motor problems of Doc Rivers-led teams will be gone, Bev can serve as the eliminator of any type of lingering issues in that respect. While he shot a career low 33.5% from deep last season. He is a career 37% shooter and will hopefully return to somewhat close to that with the gravity of Joel Embiid and potentially James Harden. Another point, obviously contingent on Harden being here, is Bev's relationship with James. I actually theorize that Bev has been instrumental in trying to keep Harden in Philly and if he stays, I will attribute some of the reason to him. This is based on literally no evidence other than their relationship, just to be clear. But Bev's energy and motor will also be helpful with Harden should he stay, as Bev likely knows what buttons to press with James. The only other move the Sixers made this offseason, other than re-signing Montrez Harrell, who then tore his ACL, was re-signing Paul Reed. I and many Sixers fans assume that the three-year, $24 million offer sheet Reed signed with the Utah Jazz would not be matched, but thankfully it was. Reed has been the only competent backup center that the Sixers have had in a playoff run during the Embiid era. If you want a fun time, go take a look at the playoff on-off stats when we had guys like Greg Monroe and DeAndre Jordan. Fun fact, Joel Embiid played 45 minutes and 12 seconds in Game 7 versus Toronto in 2019 and was a plus 10. In the 2 minutes and 48 seconds he didn't play in that entire game, the Sixers were minus 12. Moral of the story is that Paul Reed was an absolute necessity and most of every Sixers fan is glad to have him back. As I mentioned earlier, Reed could also become more than a backup center as Nick Nurse said he plans to have him and Joel share the court. Reed shot 44% from deep in the G League on roughly 4 attempts in 24 games in 2021 and 22. Hopefully Nick Nurse will also be able to help with his jump shot if that's even a possibility. While if I had 
had to take a bet that Embiid and Reed on the court will be a disaster, there is a sliver of potential that it could work. The X factor for the Sixers this year is Tyrese Maxey, even if James Harden is here, but especially if he isn't. Tyrese was averaging 23 prior to his injury in the whole bench fiasco last season, and I think he should average near to that with James and 25 plus without. If Tyrese can develop as a playmaker and ball handler, I think he has real potential to be Embiid's co-star of the future, given that the roster becomes deeper as a result of the removal of Tobias and Harden's contracts at the end of this season at the latest. Speaking of contracts, this is also a contract year for Tyrese, and my hope is that he continues developing because I know we're going to pay him. It's just a question of will it be worth it. Tyrese has great opportunity to go earn that max or near max deal, and only time will tell. The thing that gives me the most hope with Tyrese is his shooting. I feel like he is vastly underrated as a shooter due to his speed, but Tyrese shot 43% from deep on six attempts last year and has shown vast improvement throughout his career thus far. In his rookie year, Tyrese shot 30% on two attempts a game from deep. In his second season, he shot 43% on four attempts from deep. And last season, he shot 43% on six attempts from deep. Another thing with Tyrese Maxey is his work ethic. I know that, again, as you see by that shooting improvement, this guy is in the gym, in the gym. And if there's anyone, I, I relate this to Jalen Hurts. And again, I don't think, you know, Tyrese is going to become an MVP level guy. But it's also, you know, it, it's not a direct comparison with NFL and NBA. It's hard, you know, just because of how, like, again, one, one single player in the NBA can have more impact in the NFL, but the impact of the one position of quarterback, I'm not saying that Tyrese Maxey is going to be an MVP level player before, like someone, someone's going to go crazy on me in the comments. I already know. Don't think I'm comparing the two in that aspect. I'm just saying my approach with Jalen Hurts, you know, when he, when it was a question, you know, is he the guy, you know, after that 2021 season, my mindset was, I know for a fact that he is going to give it every last ounce of everything he has to make it work. And I feel that same way about Tyrese Maxey, which does make me feel great and more confident in him. You know, he's not a guy that, you know, is out here, uh, you know, asking to fly out to Miami early, uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, you know, he's not one of those guys. He's, you know, humble, locked in, like not, you know, I mean, like he, he's just a good kid, man. I love Tyrese. I, I really want to see him, you know, I mean, I really want to see him succeed. And I think he, again, he has the work ethic, the talent, and now the coaching to hopefully, you know what I mean, do that. To wrap this up, this is probably the most obvious second round exit of the Embiid era. I genuinely have no hope for this team and I will not let them fool me again. The fact that Daryl Morey's plan is to essentially punt a season for cap space in the middle of an injury riddled MVP's prime is clinically insane but it's all I got, I guess. I'm really nowhere near as invested in the Sixers as I have been in the past, and it's going to take a new co-star or Maxi having an unreal leap to make that happen again. Philadelphia is tired and has given up. The Sixers have to earn the fans back, and only time will tell if they will. If y'all enjoyed this one, please like the video and sub the channel. It does help me out a ton. Comment down below your thoughts, you know what I mean? If you think Maxi can make that leap, if you think, you know, Harden's going to dip, if you think Harden's going to come out and, you know, punt it, and I, I mean, again, that's obviously in the cards. Harden is not, you know what I mean, a stranger to that whatsoever, but man, I'm just, I'm lost, man. They drove me to the point of like, like I'm done, man, and so is everyone else. Like, I'm not the only one here. Uh, again, Sixers fans, like, I feel your pain, dog. Uh, at least we got the Eagles, and if y'all are Sixers fans and not Eagles fans and you're fans of a garbage football team, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm, Or if you're just a basketball fan, I'm really sorry, because if I was just a basketball fan, I would hate the sport. <laughs> I would not be just a basketball fan, <laughs> but uh, I mean... I mean, I am, you know, I, I mean, obviously I'm a big basketball fan. I'm running a, you know, a YouTube channel on basketball, but just in terms of my investment in the Sixers, man, I'm done. I was done. See, and the problem was I said this last year, but then of course they like, oh man, man, I hate this team. Like I knew, I knew right after game one, I knew I'm like, after it all settled down, like, oh my, like, and by the way, yes, Harden had those two games. Um, Harden shot two for 14 in game three. 3 for 14 in Game 5, 4 for 16 in Game 6, and 3 of 11 in Game 7. If he would have shot 30% in one of those games, we, do you know how different everything would be right now? If he could have shot 30%, 30, 30, 30, I'm telling you, 30, 3, 0, not 40, not 50, not 35, not 32, not 31, not 33, not 34, 30, 3, 0. All I needed was you out of the 20s, dog. That's all I needed. That's all anyone needed. Again, man, I I, I can't believe it. Um, I, I can't believe it, actually. You know, it's it's more than settled in. I'm more than over it. It's just like, man, and especially when, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I was uh, at the Super Bowl, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I walked out of that and I'm like, nothing can like nothing can be that bad ever again. I walked into game six of the Boston series and I walked out and they tried their very 
very hardest. <laughs> they tried their very hardest stuff. <laughs> like, man, I don't know, man. Again, like all, all my Sixers fans, I, I, I hate this team as much as you do. I hate this sport as much as you do. Um, I gave up, and you probably did too. And no one can blame me for that because this team just finds ways to like, like you, like again, Atlanta series twenty twenty one. You replace Ben Simmons with any starting level point guard that shoots. I I would say league average from deep. I'll I'll say thirty two percent from deep. That's a five or five, maybe a six game series. This year. I'm like, okay, playing Boston, we're gonna lose in five. I wish we lo- I wish we lost in five. Of course, no, we, we can just never do things normally. You have to open up that sliver of hope. You have to win game five. Like, like, oh man, when they, uh, I don't wanna I, I, and now I'm sitting here reflecting on this because man, after game five I mean after game five I bought the game six tickets because I'm like, there is no way. There's no way. And obviously there was no way. At least Doc Rivers is gone. I can't even be excited about it, yo. I can't even be excited about Doc Rivers being gone. Do you know how much a team has to take out of me for me to not even be able to be excited about Doc Rivers being gone? Do y'all know, like, again, I'm going to put a little picture on the screen right now for everyone that's still here. I kind of wish I talked more about this in the middle of the video, but you know what? We're going to rock with it. This is primarily about the Sixers position right now. And I mean, obviously my thoughts on it, but like, you know, you know, everyone that sticks around, you know, to the end of the video can hear my real thoughts, my unfiltered off the dome, not written thoughts. Like, you know what I mean? So I, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it that way. Every video. And I do this most videos. Like I'll just, you know, I'll get to the end of my script. And I mean, it's not, I mean, it is a script. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm writing because, you know, I'd be sitting here. Like, I, be, I mean, as, as I can tell these last couple of minutes, like, I'm able to formulate myself, but, you know, it's, it's a lot easier having talking points and stuff right here. But, again, man, that's actually going to wrap this one up as I went on my good tangent at the end. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up. Sub the channel. Helps me out a ton. And, yeah, I'm out. Peace.